Good morning, everyone. Um, oops. So as you all know, we have the technology now uh, to quickly and easily interrogate the genome of common cancers. And when we do that, um, what we're finding is that um, the common cancers are made up of lots of different mutations. Um, so this is a, just a representative example of what one might find in the genome of any common tumor. Um, and what you find is that there are some mutations. Each of these um, colored bars here represents a gene mutation. And the height of the bar represents the frequency of that mutation in the particular tumor type. So in the red are mutations that occur relatively frequently, but even those um, are only occurring about 10 to 15 percent of the time. And in the blue and green are less common mutations, um, sometimes occurring with less than 1 percent frequency. Not all of these are mutations that are contributing um, to the development of the cancer. And one of the real complexities here is to sort out what genes are mutated, what genes are contributing to the cancer, what genes are irrelevant to the cancer. Um, nevertheless, this is the kind of report that clinicians are beginning to receive from genomic profiling studies, and it makes it very complicated to sort this all out. Um, in addition, it's increasingly difficult to do clinical trials in these rare subsets of patients simply because they are rare, and it's difficult to find enough patients uh, to actually be able to do a conventional clinical trial. The problem that we're trying to address with the TAPER study is summarized here. Um, increasingly, we find that patients with advanced cancer who no longer have any standard treatment options are having a genomic profiling test performed. These are readily available now um, throughout the clinical oncology community. Um, sometimes a, what's known as a potentially actionable variant is detected. That is, some mutation in the tumor that is known to be the target of a drug, uh, and that leads to um, the consideration that treating the patient with that drug might be beneficial to them. The estimates in the literature are highly variable, but somewhere between 40 and 70 percent of the time, if you do a genomic profile on a patient's cancer, it's likely to turn up something that the doctor might be able to act on. The question that the doctor and the patient then face is, how do I get the drug that is suggested by my tumor's profile? Um, in some cases, the drugs will be investigational drugs, and the patient will best be treated uh, in a conventional clinical trial of that agent. In other cases, given the large number of targeted therapies that are now commercially available, the best option for the patient might be to receive a commercially available targeted drug, but one that would have to be prescribed outside of the FDA-approved indication um, because it's not approved in that patient's tumor type. That leads to lots of difficulty oftentimes in patients even being able to get access to the drug. Their insurance may not cover it. There's lots of phone calls being made to insurance companies, to pharmaceutical companies, begging and pleading for the drug. And most importantly, uh, even if the patient can receive the drug, uh, we have no mechanism right now to learn from the experience of that patient, um, how the patient did, whether they responded or not, whether they had side effects or not. That information is never captured in any organized way that we as an oncology community uh, can learn from. So we have designed the TAPER study to address these two problems. Our overarching goal is to learn from the real-world practice of prescribing targeted therapies to patients with advanced cancer whose tumor harbors a genomic variant known to be a drug target. TAPER is in many ways a microcosm of what you just heard about with CancerLink. The goal of CancerLink is to learn as much as we can from every dimension of every patient treated with cancer. The goal of TAPER is to learn uh, about a slice of, of contemporary oncology practice. That is, what happens to patients who have a genomic profile and receive a targeted drug. Um, this will be an IRB-approved protocol with informed consent, um, and there are very specific uh, primary and secondary objectives that are shown here. I won't read them in the interest of time, but essentially what we're trying to learn about is the anti-tumor activity and toxicity of these commercially available drugs used in the real-world practice of medicine, uh, and also to facilitate patient access to these therapies so that all the angst of how to get the drug is really taken off the table. Um, uh, we think that if the TAPER study succeeds, um, there'll be many benefits to be accrued um, to really all stakeholders 
Patients will receive a targeted agent matched to their molecular profile. We don't know, of course, that that's going to work, and I want to be clear about that. Um, you know, most of the uh, literature suggests that um, the, uh, these uh, actionable genomic variants are not detected in every cancer. Even if they are detected, there's not always an appropriate drug match. Even if the patient can receive the drug, it doesn't always work. Um, so, you know, we, one of the things we want to, in a sense, monitor is what's happening when this goes on in clinical practice, because if this is not a worthwhile strategy, we need to look for other strategies. And if it is a worthwhile strategy, we want to contribute that information to the broader knowledge. Um, physicians will receive interpretation of molecular test results provided by the TAPER Studies uh, Molecular Tumor Board that I'll mention in a minute. Um, that will provide guidance and treatment recommendations. Uh, they will receive access to drugs. The drugs in the study will be provided free of charge to patients by the participating pharmaceutical companies that I'll announce in a minute. Um, the pharmaceutical industry uh, will receive data about the drugs, how they're used, what the outcomes of patients are. The data will, of course, always be de-identified. No patient-level data will ever be, um, no identifiable patient-level data will ever be um, released to anyone. Uh, and we hope that this information will give new insights to the pharmaceutical company collaborators about how to further develop uh, their drugs. And the regulatory authorities will get very important information um, about how these drugs work in real-world practice. This. I'm sure many of you realize, given the a large number of new anti-cancer drugs that have been FDA approved in just the last couple of years, and the new authorities that FDA has through such things as the breakthrough designation, that drugs are being introduced into practice right now with far less information about them than we've ever had before, because the numbers of patients in the clinical trials are smaller than ever before, and of course, they're the highly selected patients who typically uh, enroll in clinical trials. So we need to learn um, as these drugs are being used in the real world community. The eligibility criteria for TAPER are intended to be broad, broader than the typical clinical trial because we want this to be a real-world, community-based trial. Uh, the study will enroll patients with advanced solid tumors, B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and multiple myeloma, um, patients for whom there are no standard treatment options. Um, they have to have a certain um, defined organ function, uh, but we'll be uh, fairly generous about that. We'll take patients with uh, a bit uh, broader performance status criteria uh, than are typically performed. Uh, and um, essentially, any genomic test that's available to the clinician in clinical practice, as long as it's performed in a CLIA-certified, CAP-accredited, New York State-accredited laboratory, will be eligible to qualify a patient to enter the study. <coughs> Um, ASCO has established uh, three oversight committees um, to be sure that the study runs properly. Uh, we'll have a steering committee to oversee the study operations in general, uh, establish data sharing and publication policies, review plans as to when to add or remove drugs from the study, uh, as well as clinical sites. We'll have the Molecular Tumor Board comprised of experts in clinical oncology, molecular pathology, genomics, bioinformatics um, to help make the drug target match. And we'll have a data and safety monitoring board to determine uh, if and when data should be released and to which parties. This is a, a high-level schematic uh, overview of how the study is intended to work. Um, the doctor will have received the results of a genomic test. Um, they'll do an initial eligibility check to be sure the patient meets the basic criteria to enter the study. They'll obtain informed consent from the patient. They'll consult the protocol to see if there's an appropriate drug match available in the protocol. They can also consult the molecular tumor board uh, at that point if they need guidance with respect to whether an appropriate match is available. Once the drug is selected, they'll do a second eligibility check to be sure there are no drug-specific inclusion and exclusion criteria that the patient may not uh, qualify for. The patient can then be registered to the study, receive the treatment, the Data and Safety Monitoring Board will regularly review the study endpoints, and then the results will be widely released uh, at appropriate times. Um, uh, for this study, we are planning to have objective response rate as the primary endpoint of the study using the RESIS criteria. A variety of other endpoints will be collected. The unit of evaluation in the study will be a tumor type genomic variant drug group 
the plan is to enroll eight patients per group. If we don't see any responses, we'll stop enrollment in that group. If we see at least one response, we'll expand the enrollment up to a total of 24 patients. And the idea here is to detect a signal of drug activity. We're, that's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to otherwise uh, really prove anything. We hope that signals of activity will result in the pharmaceutical company, the clinical oncology research community, or others uh, on um, pursuing those signals. Um, now, the plan for the study is to complete the protocol and submit it to a central IRB in July and hopefully to begin uh, patient enrollment um, by uh, the end of this year. <clears throat> uh, I'm very delighted to tell you that we have five participating pharmaceutical companies already that have agreed to contribute 13 drugs to the study. We have two other companies that are likely to join the study as well, and several others that are considering whether to participate. Um, the companies that will be participating in the study for sure are AstraZeneca, Bristol Myers Squibb, Eli Lilly Company, Genentech, uh, and Pfizer. Uh, and I'd like to just briefly introduce the representatives from those companies who are here today and maybe just ask them to stand and, and give a wave. AstraZeneca is represented by Dr. Gregory Kurt. Thank you, Greg. Bristol Myers Squibb is represented by Dr. Joseph Levesque. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Eli Lilly Company is represented by Dr. Xiao Chun Chang. Thank you, Dr. Chang. Genentech is represented by Susan Wilson. Thank you, Susan. And Genentech and Pfizer is represented by Jonathan Potter. Jonathan, we appreciate your being here as well. Um, and as I said, each of these companies has committed to provide their drugs to the study at no charge uh, to the patients. Two technology companies uh, will support the work uh, of, uh, of operating um, the TAPER study. Data collection and study workflows will be supported by uh, SIAPS. And I'm very pleased that uh, Jonathan Hirsch, who's the SIAPS president and co-founder, uh, is here today. Um, and the knowledge base that's necessary to support the work of the Molecular Tumor Board will be provided by Illumina's next bio division, and Brady Davis from Illumina is here as well. Thank you, uh, Brady and Illumina. The study will launch initially in a limited number of sites uh, to be sure that we get the clinical operations down uh, well. Um, uh, so the initial clinical launch sites are the Michigan Cancer Research uh, Consortium, uh, represented by Dr. Phil Stella. I want to give away, Phil. Um, the uh, Cancer Research Consortium of West uh, Michigan, uh, represented by Dr. Martin Burry. Marty is here. Uh, and the Carolinas Healthcare System, represented by Dr. Ed Kim, who's hiding in the corner there. Uh, Ed, thanks for uh, coming this morning. And I also want to point out that this study is being done in collaboration with the Netherlands Cancer uh, Center for Personalized Cancer Treatment. Um, uh, this is a very interesting global collaboration. They had a plan to do a study quite similar to this one uh, in the country of the Netherlands. We decided to join forces and essentially do an identical protocol in both countries. Um, the studies will be operated independently, but with the same eligibility criteria, analysis plan, the same drugs, um, and the same endpoints. And the goal will be to combine the data from the two studies uh, as we go. And Dr. Henk Verhul is here representing the, the Netherlands Cancer Institute this morning. So that concludes my presentation about the TAPER study.